Hello, I thought we'd have a try at Railway Modeler Ex or Rail Modeler Express. Let's see if I can get my words right. Just a quick look to see how this piece of software works for um, it's a Mac piece of software, plenty of um, layout design software for Windows, less selection for Mac. Rail Modeler is a very useful piece of um, equipment, piece of software, and thought I'd have a wee go at just seeing, showing how it works. So first thing we need to do is get the um, correct scale. So you can see here, we have HO, Pico HO, fine scale right now, if you can't read that. Move it to TT, Tracks, Hornby, Kuhn, Pico, Tillig, lots of choices. So we'll just stick with Hornby for just now. And then the various track pieces are shown on the sidebar. Smart insert is here, paddle of tracks, track helixes, flexi track, closing the gap of tracks, so on. Plenty of options there. Um, you can cut tracks and shorten them and so on as well. Now, here we have file add baseboard. So I'm going to start with that. And you can have a custom shape or a rectangle. We'll just stick with a rectangle for now. I wish I had a 190 by 380 to play with, but no, let's go instead for a kind of classic 8 by 4 or what would that be? 120 by 240. Or thereabouts. Next, select the background color you want to work off. So I think let's go with bleached banana. Who can argue with bleached banana? Insert baseboard. So there we are. That gives you the size you can work with. You have a zoom option here. That's at 60% now. And then you just start working. You select. Let's take a power track to begin with. Lay it on our board. We'll put that somewhere near the middle and to the side as a power track. That seems a sensible thing to do to begin with. And it disappeared. Don't ask me why that happened. Oh. Interesting. There you are. It's happening when you think you know what you're doing. And it says no, it is not allowed. Ah yes, because I'm on the baseboard layer, that's why. Over here, I'm on the baseboard layer. I go back to this one, hopefully. There we are, I've got the happy green plus button now. So my mistakes can be your lessons and your fun as well as we go along. So we're gonna just create a very simple layout. There is a um, limit in this express version of how many pieces you can lay down. So we'll hit that limit quite quickly and we'll just accept that as we go. Um, let's work here. So it snaps to the end as a left hand point. Let's take a right hand point, but we want to spin it around. Just grab the handle, turn it 180 no, that's not what I want to do, of course. So you'd think I would know that by now. Let's go back with our left hand point, which is what I should have done. And spin that 180. Drag that down. So there we are. And we can put on another right hand point here. and take some straight track to fill in the gaps. Now, you can simply continue to add, as you can see, straight track, but that won't quite match up there correctly. So let's see if we can work it properly. There we are. Better. And we can do the same with the curves. Let's take 
a gentle fourth radius curve. One more straight first. And again. And fourth radius. Spins around approximately the right size and it joins on and it suggests you want to keep going. You can simply add on the correct number. That will give you a full loop, which obviously is a bit too many. Let's undo that. Simply add on another three, gets us the 180. So you get the idea. It's straightforward. It really works well. And you just plan away to your heart's content. We'll try to complete one circuit at least. Certainly um, what works well in terms of, ah, there we go, what works well in terms of hitting the 50 buffer is to break your layout into smaller sections if you want and design it in modules even if you're not going to build it that way you can get around the 50 limit by simply having um, multiple uh, one too many um, there we, there we go. Um, multiple um, boards that you put together uh, each of the 50 limits, so that would work fine. Um, we'll work on the inner loop, and that's going to go the wrong way, but we'll see if we can change that. I'll spin it around, bring it close, approximately to the right place, and it's going to ask me how many more I want, so it's another, well, three or five. I don't want as many as five. We'll stick with three just now. Add one more on. And there we are. Now that doesn't look quite correct, but anyway, I assume that they would have maintained their radius. But we'll see. Here we go. Let's add another one there. Add five more. Take our straights. And just fill out the blanks. Okay, so there's your ready basic layout. There is a 3D viewer, which has, I suppose, some merit. It's, it's very basic. Um, you can add more to this on the full version. You can do your layout views here. And you have your various views, if you want, of your sidebars there to give you a cleaner view just of the, work, of the layer you're working on or to have your toolbars down either side. And that's really all there is to it. This is set up for TT. All the scales are here, lots of track options, lots of other stuff you can do as well. You can draw, you can um, add some basic shapes and so on. Um, there is accessories, buildings, car parks, cars and so on here available for you. You have symbols. So let's try some accessories. I think there might be an issue with this, is there? There we are. Small church. Perfect. Coal hopper, gantry cranes, all sorts of stuff. Grain silos, houses, buildings. Plenty to Work away to your heart's content. Let's try a greenhouse. Shall we try a greenhouse? Let's put a greenhouse over here. Now, I don't think these things come out on the 3D view, no. Not sure why that is, if I'm doing something wrong, but nonetheless, in terms of planning your layout, that works very well. You can get the idea of a road working through quite easily. Uh, Car parks, there we go. 
This is also useful to get an idea realistically in terms of car parking exit station. Tend to get the wrong scale for these things and imagine you can fit in far more vehicles than you actually should. So all this stuff is useful, even if it's just to give yourself some sense of the scale that you're working in. Well, that's a very brief overview of Rail Model at Express. Like I say, I have no association with the software, but I do find it useful. And feel free to buy the full version, to remove all limits, even more powerful piece of kit. There's also up here, open tip jar. You can tip the developer without purchasing the full thing. So it says here, it's a one-man operation. It's a free edition of the app, if you like it, but don't want to switch to unlimited paid version, but would like to stay around and feel free to chip in with this. And doing so, if you support the project just one time, you get five layers instead of one in all your layouts. Doesn't matter which one you use, there's 199, 499, 699. So it does unlock some extra functionality as well. You get multiple layers to work with for as little as 199. So I think that's well worth doing. Do feel free to have a look around yourselves. There's no doubt other software out there. This is one I found. It's on the Mac App Store and works well for me. Just to finish that off, come back to Rail Model Express. I open recent. I've got the other layers that I'd used. Use this software to design fiddly yard, ignore the um, loops at the bottom. That was just me testing out um, space I needed and underestimating how wide I had to have the boards apart for a proper loop. Um, there's that. There's the shunting yard. Um, so these don't always bear much reality compared to what I have ended up doing, but nonetheless, they allow some idea. Um, the intention in this one, for example, was that the um, the rail would be at a, a lower level and everything else would be up around it and when I actually built it, I flipped that round so the rail was at the lower level, at the higher level, and this went underneath it rather than over it as it's shown here. But it gives you enough to work with, gives you some idea of what you've got. So you flip that into 3D and you get some idea of the layout on the small board. Don't know why these buildings don't come out, but they don't. Um, nonetheless, in 2D it works fine. Maybe that's a feature that unlocks with a full version, I don't know. Um, and then just for the sake of the completion, if we go for the station one, it's a very simple layout. Some idea here of a bridge crossing, of a terrace of houses, a wee station down the bottom, car parking, and a simple uh, branch off the main line. And one more, which was almost uh, too simple to imagine. That was the extremely detailed planning for my more scenic section. Um, so that's sitting there. And I've just remembered this fellow. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, there's a bit more. Um, one fine day in the middle of the night, uh, Strum Ferry. Uh, someone gave me a um, old OS map of Strom Ferry on the west coast of Scotland back in the day. And there was a little wagon. This this here, you can't see it in this, but this actually is a, is a jetty out into the into the loch, sea loch, with a little wagon turntable on the end um, and the main line coming in. And it would be a great little project, maybe one day. Um, not quite ready for that yet. But there you are, that allows you to see what can be done. And as I say here, I've used the um, Pico Flexi Track to fill out the gaps. Otherwise I was buffering up against my um, my 50 piece limit. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.